The politics lead the one man revolt amplified this afternoon with Republican Congressman Justin Amash today repeating his case to impeach President Trump. Amash is the first and so far the only Republican to go this far. His argument now making conversations, though, about impeachment bipartisan ones. As seen in Sunland Sirfati reports, however, it is up to House Democrats to take the lead. Republicans today rushing to shut down one of their own for saying, quote, President Trump has engaged in impeachable conduct. He votes more with Nancy Pelosi than he ever votes with me. It's a question whether he's even in our Republican conference as a whole. Michigan Republican Congressman Justin Amash doubling down on Twitter this afternoon, making a legal case for impeaching the president of his own party. Amash accusing the president of obstructing the Russia investigation, saying that Mueller's report reveals that President Trump engaged in specific actions in a pattern of behavior that meet the threshold for impeachment. And undoubtedly, any person who is not the president of the United States would be indicted based on such evidence. President Trump quickly hitting back, calling Amash a total lightweight and a loser, tweeting, how do you obstruct when there is no crime? Republican Senator Mitt Romney, a frequent critic of Trump, telling Jake Tapper on State of the Union Sunday that he does not agree with Amash. Justin Amash has reached a different conclusion than I have. Uh, I respect him. I think it's a courageous statement. Amash's conclusion going even farther than Democratic leadership and many Democrats. Now, I don't want to impeach. Even as some Democrats are now using Amash's position as a call to arms. I think we have a little more work to do in our investigation and exposure of this, uh, but I'm not ruling out in any way impeachment. Mm -hmm. I'm eager to see uh, Democrats show the same kind of courage that Justin Amish uh, has shown. This isn't the first time Amash, a libertarian, has been willing to publicly split from his party. In February, he stood alone among Republicans for earnestly questioning the president's former attorney, Michael Cohen. What is the truth that you know President Trump fears most? And Amash is now facing a primary challenger back home in Michigan. State Rep James Lower, he announced that he intends to run against Amash in the upcoming election. He says he decided uh, before uh, Amash came out and set his stance on this, but certainly he says people back home are very angry about this position. Erica? We'll be watching for more on that. Selen, thank you. Uh, in fact, Congressman Amash really doubling down, repeating his case today, even after the criticism he received over the weekend for initially sending those tweets. It does beg the question, though, Jackie, what do you make of his timing? It's a really good question. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, I mean, you're right. I mean, we're, we're coming up against the, the White House stonewalling, um, many members of the House. Um, I don't know that he has spoken to what his... Uh, the, the timing of this is. That said, um, you're listening to that sound from Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Justin Amash has been someone who has broken with his party many times. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of pent-up, um, we'll say, resentment within the party about even being a libertarian. He says no a lot to his own party. Now, we'll have to wait and see if, he, if, if this hurts him politically. Um, he's someone that has a district that has seemed to like him the last couple of years or the last couple of cycles. Um, all the other Trump, the people who have challenged Trump in the past so far, Bob Corker, um, Jeff Flake, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Sanford, they've either resigned or, or, I'm sorry, retired, or they've lost their seat. We'll see if that happens to him. Um, it's, not, it's not clear yet. I mean, he has, and I've talked to him about this before, asking him, how do you do that? His, his district is about 50-50, mm -hmm. so he's got a lot of people in it, for example, that supported Obamacare, and he didn't support Obamacare because he's libertarian, and he kind of sticks really, you know, to the, those issues. And he says it's because he has such a close relationship with his constituents, and that he really takes the time to explain to them how he reaches his conclusions. You know, I was like, no, I don't really know how that really changes anything mm -hmm. in terms of if you don't support what they support, but he says that it works. So... I think that he's actually, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but I think he's very principled. Well, and he tend, and I think you have to respect that. And so I think this is a good example of him being principled. He said he read the whole report and this is the conclusion that he came to. Well, and I think his political future will be determined by whether his own voters believe this is actually a matter of principle or this is a desire to get more attention. And, and in focus groups that I've done of Republican voters, that's sort of their number one 
frustration with what they perceive whenever a Republican leader, you know, puts out a press release. Oh, the president just said this one thing, but I wish the president hadn't done it. Anytime there's criticism coming from inside the House, Republican voters' big frustration is not that there are honest disagreements within the party, but a frustration that they feel some Republicans try to profit or benefit or make a name for themselves by being the ones to take a shot at Trump. And if that's how Congressman Amash's voters view him, rather than as somebody who is doing this because he's genuinely principled. That would be sort of and that's, that's not like something that McCarthy said, right? Yeah, he basically said, oh, this way. is just something uh, he's doing just to get attention. I imagine there are all sorts of things he could do to get attention, but also not put his seat in jeopardy, right? Because he's got this a primary challenge as well. It does kind of bring to mind, this is a, it's, you know, he's from Michigan, represents a district there that you said, I think Trump won by like 51% or something like that. It does sort of lead to the broader question of what Michigan looks like for this president and what those voters look like for this president. It's a state that he won by about 10,000 uh, votes in 2016. We obviously have seen uh, the, the 2020 candidates go there already and focus on, on this state. So that's what it brings to mind. It's not even a matter of whether or not folks on the Hill are going to line up behind Justin Amash, but whether or not he's speaking to a sort of discontent among rank and file uh, Republican voters, not the majority of them, but around the edges. There is too, and I just want to get your take on this, because there is the other part of this, which is now now there's a Republican who's come forward and faced criticism and then, as we saw just a short time ago, doubled down. So isn't backing away from it. And we've heard from Democrats, well, you know, a number of different things. Well, we need bipartisan support. We can only do this in the Senate. Would a Republican senator perhaps carry more weight than a member of the House? Yes, if you're talking impeachment. But it begs the question, you know, Kirsten, how much longer can Democrats continue to punt on what their reasoning is and what their plan is as to whether or not they plan to proceed with impeachment? Well, I think I think they have a completely defensible position, which is they're trying to do an investigation. And so mm -hmm. you should actually you should do the investigation before you talk about actually impeaching somebody. I think that that's a reasonable thing to do. And that's what they're trying to do. And they're getting stonewalled, basically. Right. So I think that they can keep trying and do that, trying to do that. I don't think they're going to have Republicans joining hands with them on this. And I think Justin Amash is a bit of a unicorn. I don't mm -hmm. think there are a lot of people that are like him, frankly, in either party, mm -hmm. you know, who, who frequently do this, who he frequently comes out and, and stakes out positions that are, you know, go against his party. But the idea that he's not conservative is kind of crazy. He's a member of the Tea Party, yeah, right? Yeah, right? So he's not, I mean, he holds very conservative positions. Don't let the voting record get in the way of a good <laughs> soundbite. Like, Come on. Yeah. <laughs>